Hi, and welcome back. So a new study out of Tufts University has shown that a combination of green tea and resveratrol and a few other compounds can prevent the formation of amyloid plaques. Amyloid plaques, as you know, form in the brains of people who suffer from Alzheimer's disease. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of Tufts University has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Taylor McNeil of Tufts University, Massachusetts, which covered a study that investigated the effect that green tea and resveratrol had on amyloid plaques, and these are present in Alzheimer's disease. The study was published in the journal Free Radical Biology and Medicine, and there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. It affects more than six million Americans and its incidence is expected to rise significantly in the coming decades. And I would assume that these figures are very similar in most first and second world countries. The cause of Alzheimer's disease in its most common form, which is not genetically based, is not understood that well at all. Not knowing the cause makes treatment of the disease very difficult, but progress is being made. Earlier this year, using a 3D model of living human brain cells, Tufts University researchers showed the common herpes virus could induce plaques in the brain associated with Alzheimer's disease. Those Tufts researchers are now working to understand what might help to slow the progression of the disease. To date, they have tested 21 different compounds in Alzheimer's afflicted neural cells in their lab. They are measuring the compound's effect on the growth of sticky beta amyloid plaques. These are the plaques that develop in the brains of the people who have Alzheimer's disease. The researchers found that two of the 21 common compounds they tested reduced the formation of plaques in those neural cells. The two compounds were green tea catechins. Catechin is a flavanol, a type of secondary metabolite that provides antioxidant properties in the plant. It belongs to the subgroup polyphenols called flavonoids. The second compound was resveratrol, known I'm sure to many of you who followed the work of Dr. David Sinclair. Resveratrol is found in red wine and in some other foods. It can also be extracted from grape skins and turned into a supplement in the form of a powder. Some of the 21 compounds tested reduced the disease progression by acting as antiviral agents, slowing the Alzheimer's induced by the herpes virus. Dana Cairns, PhD of the Kaplan Lab in Tufts University said, finding a compound that could diminish the plaques regardless of the virus component would be ideal because this would show that regardless of the cause of the Alzheimer's, you might still see some kind of improvement. The initial screening was done in simpler models. Then the compounds that had a positive effect were tested in the 3D neural tissue model. The model is created using a non-reactive silk sponge seeded with human skin cells that, through genetic reprogramming, are converted into neural stem cell precursors. These cells grow and populate the sponge, which allows for 3D network formation of neurons similar to what you'd see in the human brain, explained Dr. Keynes. Dr. Keynes then stated the initial screen found five components had really robust prevention of these plaques. In addition to the green tea compounds and resveratrol, they found curcumin from turmeric, the diabetic medication metformin and a compound called citicoline prevented the plaques from forming and did not have antiviral effects. Dr. Keynes of Tufts University went on to say, we hope to find components that would be harmless and show some level of efficacy. Green tea compounds and resveratrol met that standard. We got lucky that some of these showed pretty strong efficacy. In the case of these compounds that passed the screening test, they had virtually no plaques visible after about a week. 
green tea catagens, the molecules in the tea leaves that have the antioxidant effect, have been explored as a potential treatment for some cancers. And resveratrol has been tested for its anti-aging properties. Keynes, however, added a word of caution, saying that seeing the effects in the lab doesn't always necessarily translate to what you might see in a patient. Some compounds do not cross the blood-brain barrier, which would be essential in the case of Alzheimer's. And some have low bioavailability, meaning they're not readily absorbed into the body or absorbed into somebody's bloodstream. That said, the discovery is significant because at present there is no cure for Alzheimer's disease or even a way to prevent its progression. There are several potential drugs under development, but these are still in the trial stage. Dr. Keynes mentioned that these compounds, talking of green tea and resveratrol, that show some efficacy, are known to be safe and are easily accessible, could be taken as a supplement or consumed as part of one's diet. With regard to diet, Dr. Kane stated, for example, natural sources of resveratrol include red wine, certain fruit such as grapes, blueberries and cranberries, and peanuts, pistachios and cacao. While it's empowering to be able to take measures like these to potentially prevent neurodegeneration in the future, it's also important to consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your diet. Looking ahead, potential areas of investigation for researchers and pharmaceutical companies would be to take the beneficial properties of these compounds and, as Dr. Kane says, try to enhance them to make them more bioavailable or make them penetrate the blood-brain barrier a bit better. So where can you get hold of these two compounds? Well, green tea is widely available in loose leaf form, in tea bags, and actually in supplement form. As previously stated, resveratrol is found in red wine and some foods, but the amount and the bioavailability is not yet fully known. As Dr. Keynes mentioned, resveratrol is also available in supplement form, and you can get it from Renew by Science, who will sell you 100 grams of trans resveratrol for $84.95. That's 84 cents per gram. DoNotAge.org will sell you the same 100 grams of trans resveratrol for $105. That's $1.05 a gram. Both offer a 10% discount when you use the code MYNMN at their checkout, and the price will then drop to this. For Renew by Science, $76.46. Now that's 76 cents per gram. Do Not Age's price then drops to $94.50. That's 94 cents a gram. So at present, Renew by Science is around $18.04 cheaper for 100 grams. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. You can see that I do drink green tea, not every day. The setup I've got here allows me two or three cups if I do drink it. Um, sometimes green tea as it is here, sometimes I mix mint into it as well. If you follow the channel, you'll know that I do take trans resveratrol, a gram a day mixed into yogurt to improve the bioavailability. But not every day, only the days that I don't train in the gym. So usually about three or four times a week. I'd be interested to see in the comments below if you do drink green tea as part of your anti-aging regime or if you may want to think about introducing it having now seen the results of this study that goes for resveratrol also uh, also in the comments below let me know what you think of the lighting i'm recording this later than i normally do in the day uh, here in the middle east winter is coming let me know if it's okay or not if it's not i'll probably try and introduce more lights or i will try i will endeavor to record this earlier in the day 